Hello. So I think it's about the time to start. So hello everyone. So my name is Li Ma and I'm from AW Cloud. So I think most of you don't know AW Cloud. So we are a pure OpenStack player in China from 2012. And uh, we, pro we help our enterprise customers to design, build, and operate OpenStack clouds. So I'm the architect in this company, and I was studied with a focus on software-defined networking and distributed systems. So today I'm going to talk about messaging and the RPC messaging patterns in OpenStack and uh, why not RabbitMQ or Cupid for us. And uh, I will introduce an asynchronous messaging library called ZeroMQ and also the distributed messaging driver in OpenStack, which is developed based upon ZeroMQ. So finally, I will introduce some real-world deployments that we have been done. So RPC messaging. As most of you guys know, it is a very critical component in any single OpenStack installation. So when your messaging system have, has problems and when it doesn't work with you and it doesn't scale with you as you continue to grow, so you may run into major issues with the rest of your OpenStack installation. So the other reason why is because most of the OpenStack systems depends on messaging to be reliable and to work with you all the time. So if your messaging system had problems, uh, for, for, for example, like uh, compute and uh, conducts and or neutron agents, if your messaging system had problems, all these systems used to work properly for us. So you can see that the RPC messaging is very critical for us. So when we set out to deploy OpenStack in 2012, we chose RabbitMQ as it is the official reference. But however, we found numerous problems with reliability, resiliency, and speed. So I know it's not just us have RPC issues. There are various topics that have been presented in every summit, so you can review them from YouTube, and uh, I'm not going to discuss with them in detail. So in conclusion, we really faced these problems. So when we deployed OpenStack in 2012, and uh, our OpenStack distribution is based upon SX, and uh, we deployed a single RabbitMQ instance at the early stage, and uh, we rely on uh, monitoring and uh, operations to make it stable. And uh, as time went by, we switched to clustering technology. Mm. But however, problems were still there because it the deployment became much more complicated for us. So, um, for example, um, RabbitMQ itself is a black box for us, really. So, and uh, moreover, you need to, when you deploy in a production system, you need to deploy like a HA proxy as an external heartbeat method along with pacemaker, which uh, makes everything highly available, and you also need to identify the ratio of the RAM nodes and disk nodes without any best practice guide. So, moreover, we also keep, kept pace with the community to, uh, to continue to upgrade our RPC libraries to get rid of these bugs, which is reported in Launchpad, and uh, finally, the monitoring and operations are still needed to check if the whole cluster is overloaded or malfunctioning. So, so the bottom line is here. We found that scaling a broker is not practical for us because we have a lot of customers and uh, partners in IDC industry. So they need, they need to start small and uh, scale online. So scaling a broker is really difficult. So we need to find some other solutions available for us. 
So let's review our requirements for RPC messaging. So firstly, it should be no, there should be no single point of failure, and uh, it should be something that be horizontally scaling, and uh, it also should be reliable. So finally, we found that zero MQ driver is the answer, and uh, it met all of our requirements. So. So in 2014, we launched our OpenStack distribution based upon S House, and uh, we totally switched to Zero MQ driver in OpenStack. And uh, it has a distributed message architecture. It is horizontally scaling, and uh, it has fast delivery. And uh, but unfortunately, in S House, some of the objects uh, doesn't switch to Oslo messaging. So we need to develop it for each project. And also in this year, we stick on the RMQ, and uh, also we have some improvements on performance and stability. And also, the RPC library totally switched to us adult messaging. So zero MQ, zero means zero broker, zero latency, and zero cost. So zero MQ is a high-performance asynchronous messaging library aimed at use in scalable distributed or concurrent applications. So it really provides a messaging queue, but without a dedicated message broker. So, okay. so Zero MQ library is considered as an intelligent socket library, which gives you sockets and that carries atomic messages through various transports, like in-process, inter-process, TCP, uh, multicast group communication. So it doesn't have these rigid defined structures like MQP does, like queues and exchangers. Instead, it, have, it has a single interface, a single socket interfaces like bind, connect, send, and receive. So it is clear that anyone who is familiar with socket programming is likely to work with zero queue very well. So, and the most powerful stuff is the uh, patterns. So zero MQ patterns is implemented through a pair of sockets that has matching types like request and reply. It is a classical request and reply patterns. It is synchronous communication uh, because the cli when client sends a request, it is blocked immediately and uh, until it receives the reply from the server. So in zero MQ, it doesn't rely on the sequence of service that, and it is usually used in RPC and uh, CSCOM applications. So and uh, the next pattern is pub and sub. So it is a published and a subscribe model, and it is asynchronous. Uh, when pub socket sends a message, it returns immediately, and uh, the I/O threads at the background does the rest of the things. So and the pub socket cannot receive and sub socket cannot send. And the next pattern is push and pull. So it is a pipeline pattern and it is also asynchronous. So it implements a fair queuing to sort the request from the upstream. So and Zero MQ also has some advanced socket patterns like dealer and router, x pub, x sub, and you can also define your own. So I'm not expand this this part and uh, you can review the RMQ guide in this official website. So here, what has the RMQ brought to us? So first, the RMQ is a messaging library. It is not a messaging system. So it allows us to define our own messaging models. So finally, we found that the RMQ library can bring Brokerless architecture, so it is becomes possible to have a messaging layer for OpenStack without any central brokers. So let's see the Zero MQ driver in OpenStack. So it was introduced in Fossum. So really, it has has been there for years. But I know some some of you don't know Zero MQ driver because it lacks of test garbage. So it is mostly unmaintainable in upstream four years. So there is a summit topic taken in Hong Kong summit. 
going block list the transition from QPL to ZRM Q, which is presented by Bluehost. It is a huge uh, service provider in United States. And actually, I was on spot in Hong Kong, so I had a conversation with engineers in Bluehost after the in, in the summit. So, and uh, at that time, I had a feeling that the RMQ driver is really worth trying. So, when I, when I returned from Hong Kong, and uh, we start we started to experiment and uh, do some evaluations and. Uh, yeah, it, it's really great. So finally, in upstream, it has been switched to Oslo.messaging. So actually, theoretically, all the OpenStack projects can take advantage of this driver. So as I stated before, Zero MQ driver implements blockless architecture for OpenStack RPC. So let's see how it works. Mm, firstly, I will introduce messaging topology. Zero MQ driver has a distinct message topology with uh, traditional messaging systems. So let's see the, the left part. The, it is a start, start topology, which brought by a broker solution. So all the messages need to run through the central broker when some open stack components needs to communication with others. And the left side is ZeroMQ. ZeroMQ is considered as a peer-to-peer -peer distributed system. It forms a partially connected mesh. So you can see that any OpenStack co components can directly send a message to the dis final destinations. So there is no central broker. So theoretically, it can scale out very well. So let's see some components in the ZRMQ driver first RPC client. So here are five open stack services which are running in five hosts. So the RPC client, the, each open stack service can consider it as an RPC client. So it sends messages through a message queue to the others. So the next component is zero MQ receiver. It is a new component which br which brought by zero MQ driver. So it is a distributed broker running on each host. So let's see how it works. So here's still five open stack components and uh, each with a zero MQ receiver. So there's no single broker and the messages directly sent from open stack services to another. <coughs> So here, zero MQ receiver receives the message from RPC client via TCP, and then it redistributes messages to local processes via IPC. So that each receiver manages the, the, all the messages within the local host. So you can see that here, five, here are the five, five hosts, and uh, each have a zero MQ receiver. So when the message goes through from uh, OpenStack service to another, it, from OpenStack service to the destination zero MQ receiver, then the MQ the redistribute message to the destination destina OpenStack service. So let's see in a single host. Here is the zero MQ receiver. When it receives the message, then it it manages a set of IPC channels. Then the messages, uh, uh, the messenger topic is scheduler, so it is going through the IPC channels to the Nova scheduler. So it is inside a single host. So, the, so that's why I say that it is a distributed broker running on each host. And the final co component is Matchmaker. It implements the auto host discovery. It is designed for bare topic. So uh, in OpenStack, there are two, uh, generally there are two types of message topic. Uh, the, one is, the first one is direct topic. So you can see it is the topic type. So um, here is the compute means that this message will send to the Nova compute, Nova compute host. 
and the dot here is the host name, host one. It means so I know that I will send this message to the Nova computer, which resides on the host one. So it is a direct to topic. And then the next is the bare topic. It like you can in OpenStack they have find out messages. So when you send a find out messages, it it doesn't uh, specify any destinations because so I need to broadcast this message to all the Nova computes. So the matchmaker in Zerum Q implements to uh, was implemented to support bare topic. So let's see. So here is a neutron server, and uh, here we have two neutron agents on each host. So we have each have each has a Zerum Q receiver. So here we have a matchmaker server. So when neutron agents agent restart, it automatically register its host name to the matchmaker. So it has the host name LB agent 1, it has the host name LB agent 2. So when neutron server need to find out a message with this topic, and it initially it goes to matchmaker to ask, here I need to send a message, so where should I send to? So the matchmaker returns a list of host names of the neutron agents. So then the neutron server send the messages one by one. So it, simula it uh, simulates the broadcast. So, so the, ma the matchmaker in Zerum Q driver is implemented based upon a Redis server. So in Redis, the key value is the topic and the host name. So you can see that I send a topic and the neutron server can find where I should go, where the message should go. So here is a typical deployment scenario. So we have a controller which runs Nova, Neutron, Accelerometer, Keystone, Glance, Horizon, and Database. So we need to start a new process called Oslo Zerum Q Receiver. And it manages all the messages uh, related with this process. So I need to run a Redis server in our network. And also on computer node, there's Nova, maybe Nova Compute, and Neutron L2 agents, and a Cilometer Computer agents, and you also need to run a Zerum Q Receiver to manage the messages inside the host. And also on network node, there are Neutron agents, so you also need to run Zerum Q Receiver. So there's no any central brokers called like RabbitMQ resides in this network. So all the local brokers are Zerum Q Receiver. So Zerum Q Driver in Oslo.messaging, which is a decentralized RPC solution. So it implements a multi-host mode for messaging broker. And uh, really, it is supported in also messaging in Kilo, so we can, we can use this. And also, it uh, is supported in dev stack in Kilo. So if someone need to have a try, you can run dev stack. And uh, here is a simple configuration for Zero MQ. Just disable RabbitMQ, disable Cupid, and enable Zero MQ. And also, you can specify Zero Matchmaker to Redis. So, but this uh, here, on, uh, it is only support, support all in one deployment in dev stack. So here are some future directions in upstream we are discussing in the mailing list to improve the Zerum Q driver. So first is the outbound socket pool. Actually, this function has been implemented in Liberty and by Chronicle. So. Uh, the outbound socket pool is very important for Zerum Q. So, in Kilo, the Zerum Q driver, when some OpenStack services needs to send a message, they need, need to create a new Zerum Q socket to send it and close it. So, every time you need to send a message, you need to create a new Zerum Q and close it. So, it is not very efficient. So, here we implement a socket pool to reuse and recycle ZRMQ sockets 
in the life cycle. So it's very important. And another uh, part is some we need to do some refracting work. So this refracting work are uh, proposed by Marantius. So firstly, all, currently all the logic we, uh, was implemented in implementmqdm.py. It is only one uh, Python source file. So when some newcomer needs to learn their MQ driver in detail, and you need to uh, read the code and maybe find some problems because everything is in one Python file, so we need to separate it. And another stuff is to improve its socket pipeline by using some advanced patterns, which I stated before, like dealer router. So it is more technical detail. So, and uh, another important part is supporting the multi backend. So currently, Zerum Q can run with almost all the OpenStack projects. You. Um, but unfortunately, when Cinder implements multi backend feature, it it changes the directed topic uh, format. So, as I stated before, the directed topic uh, usually uh, forms as a topic name dot host name. But however, in Cinder, multi when you enable Cinder multi backend, it follows by a backend name. So usually, the host in zero MQ driver, the host one at CF can is can be is considered as the real host name. So actually, usually the host string is not resolvable. So we need to fix them, fix it. And also, the very important stuff is that if you are really interested in zero MQ, try to use it and give feedbacks to feedbacks to the upstream. So zero MQ driver really needs more and more real-world deployment cases. Actually, we run, we have some real-world deployment cases, but when I discuss with the community, I find uh, it is really like, uh, we really like some, some other deployment cases. So if you are interested in it, please try it and uh, give feedback. So we can get this message and uh, can discuss with the uh, with other developers in their MQ driver to see how to move on. So here are some real-world deployment cases from AW Cloud, which we have done so far. So actually, uh, during the last year, we deployed more than 20 uh, OpenStack in production. So all the, all the cases are, are using their MQ. So first one is Beijing Teletron Public Cloud, and uh, the total physical machine has more than 300, and the running instance more than 8,000, and uh, this project we, were, we uh, started from 2013. This is a public cloud. And another one is the China Education Television, so it has more than 5, 000, uh, 500 physical machines in, uh, which run in OpenStack, and uh, this project was started from uh, 2014. So, and uh, here is another public cloud which is in development stage. It is at the early stage and uh, it had more than 1,000 physical machines inside the data center. And uh, I'm not sure how it is because this project is at the initial stage. But actually, actually I have a I have a feeling that uh, there is no problem in in RPC plan. So because Zero MQ is a fully distributed solution and it can scale out, so we don't need to care much about it. So I think I will spend more on database part. So here are some deployment tips when you try Zero MQ. The first one is. Uh, the host name should be resolvable. So either in static part or static file, or you can run a DNS server in the cluster. And the next one is sometimes zero MQ, when you're using the MQ message, may be disappeared without any exceptions. This problem is discovered in our production system, but usually happens in large scale deployments and 
The solution is very simple to increase and receive socket buffer of kernel. Uh, because zero MQ is, uh, is a low level socket library, so its performance mostly rely on the, the operating system, the, the, the TCP IP stack inside the kernel. So maybe uh, in some, uh, in some situation, you, you, need to, you need to optimize the kernel stack. And here are two references maybe you are interested in. The first one is the Zero MQ deployment guide, which I was, I written it and uh, put it in the op dot, uh, docs.openstack.com. So if you wanted to deploy Zero MQ in, uh, manually, and uh, maybe this is a uh, this is an important reference. And another is upstream status, which I will um, maintain in this wiki page. And uh, all the zero MQ, uh, all the bugs which is found, uh, found in zero MQ driver and, uh, its, uh, and its review status and all the blueprints and uh, all the references. And uh, I will put them on this wiki page. So you can check it. So, thank you very much. And uh, if you have any problems, you can send an email to me, so I'm willing to help. So, any questions? I have a question. Um, okay. Since this, since you're going from a start topology to a peer-to-peer -peer mesh, do you, does it change the way you want to change, uh, deploy your networking on your management layer? Do you want to? Do you want to use a different way? Uh, you know, do you need 10 gig on your management layer, or is it going to change the way you would do that? Oh, it is okay. In our in our deployments, we always put zero MQ uh, network uh, with within the management network. But you can, uh, let me see. So, okay, you can you can read this deployment guide, and it will help you to. If you have a dedicated network of just running for the RPC, you can you can set it up. So it is easy to just specify the network in the zero MQ options in in the configuration file. Uh, hey, uh, it was good to see the real world use cases. Uh, thanks for that. So the question I have is like, uh, do you guys care about like like I know at least from when I looked at zero MQ that it didn't have any security support. So like you could not use SSL or things like that. So does that matter, or for now, you guys are just not tackling that problem? Uh, you mean the, the, the security, the, the encryption or decryption uh, yeah. of the zero MQ message? Currently, uh, <coughs> I find that currently, a zero MQ library supports the, the message, message encryption and decryption, but uh, the driver in upstream doesn't implement it yet. So we, we, will, we will find, uh, find some time to to discuss how to implement it in the upstream. Uh, you said the message disappears in a large scale deployment. Is there any retry mechanism without, because the, the risk is the disappears, disappears without any errors or exceptions? Or uh -huh. Are there any retry mechanisms built in? <coughs> how does the high level application know that the message is not uh, Currently, when, uh, when I was I discover, when I discovered this problem in our uh, in our production system, it is it happens for the neutron security group uh, because the neutron security group has a very large payload of the of the message, and when zero MQ send this message, and it the message is uh, is discarded by the uh, by the operating system. So we find out we need to increase the socket buffer of the kernel to make it work. Uh, do you have any numbers to show us the difference in performance between the Rabbit and Zero MQ? Oh, let me see. Uh, I just uh, let me let me. See. Okay. Uh, let me check. So, so I just mentioned that there is uh, there is. Uh, some the topic taken in Hong Kong, and uh, maybe uh, I, I find I know uh, there is. Uh, let me check. 
Oh, so here it is. So this topic, this topic, and uh, Bluehost provides some data for performance. So you can check this uh, this presentation. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Uh, right. So I have probably some basic question. Uh, so how the clients uh, talk to can actually identify themselves? Well, find this matchmaker, right? So they're. Oh, all the, the matchmaker is a Redis server. So you need to specify the the Redis server's IP and the port and the username and the password in the configuration file. So in terms of high availability, you still do need to have this ready server somehow make mm -hmm. high available itself, right? It's, mm -hmm. And for example, the, the, the every new client receiver, how do you call this, uh, in the first place needs to auto-discover itself or auto-discover all the queues and topics using the ready server. Uh, when the, okay, okay, I got it. So let me see. Oh. Sorry. Mm. So there are a queue receiver. Okay. Okay, so the when uh, when you enable the RMQ in the in your OpenStack cluster and uh, and the the neutron the all the OpenStack services when it rest, when it starts it, itself and it will dynamically register uh, the topic and the its host name into the into the matchmaker and we implemented it. Mm -hmm. So, any any like. Um implementation guides how to make this matchmaker HA basically because all these clients are like very nice because they are distributed okay and independent you don't have the central point by this matchmaker server seems to be kind of again much make well it's a like a single point of failure for me uh, it is a radius server so you can make it highly available according okay. to the some radius best uh, radius guide so okay it is okay. not it is not single failure point okay. single point of failure thank you Hi, I, I came in a little late, so I may have missed this. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, so this architecture doesn't involve queuing. It eliminates queuing completely. Have you had any problems with notification-based services? If there are no listeners for a notification, I imagine it would get dropped. Or uh, there, there, there is a listener inside the ZRM queue driver. So you mean a centimeter? Yeah, I'm thinking about accounting, for example. Um, RPC, it makes sense not to go queue with a queue, in my opinion. Uh, if there's nobody listening, the RPC will fail. But if you're setting notifications that can't get lost, if there's, say, a reset of the system and the servers aren't listening, it may drop notifications. I'm just wondering if you've seen any application misbehaviors or anything like that, or is, or is it actually working quite well? Uh. Okay, currently, uh, the RMQ code driver uh, just uh, just supports the the RPC notification. Oh, just okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Isn't it true that the slometer event data doesn't go over rapid? Doesn't go over RabbitMQ in the first place, right? It's an on, on event. It's on event database. Is that correct? So this wouldn't apply in terms of like slometer event data. Or does the slometer event data go use? How, how does this affect? I guess I understand this question now. How does this affect the way that slometer would communicate with the with its event data that that people that each service sends to slometer? Uh, each server can directly send uh, a cellometer. Currently, cellometer also also can can run with zero MQ. So currently, uh, the the service will send a, uh, directly send the notifications to the cellometer host. 
Yeah. Yeah, it works. Yeah, you can, uh, you can, okay, I, okay, so, uh, let me see that, okay, okay, I just, uh, in my, in my, uh, Let me let me see this one. No, no. Okay, in this in this deployment guide, and you can specify which network you use for the RMQ. Yeah, the uh, you can specify the RMQ the listening address actually. So, uh, usually we deploy the RMQ, the RMQ uh, network within the management network. But you can, if you have a redundant NIC for just for RPC, so you can do that. So okay, thank you very much. <laughs>